Hello and welcome to episode 55 of Generation GC, Empty Spirits by the Madden Brothers from their Greetings from California album in 2014, and my guest is Alex Silva. My name is Molly Huddleston, and as always, I am your host. A few days ago on our last regular episode, we talked about a live from Cardiology. In a few days, next Wednesday, we'll be back with our next regular episode on a song from Youth Authority. Alex is 30 years old, and she recently moved to Arizona from her hometown in California, where she had lived all her life. Prior to the pandemic, she was a substitute teacher. So cool. Alex has been a GC fan since she was 11, and she is definitely a diehard fan. I did a poll earlier this year on what types of things y'all wanted to see on bonus episodes, and a lot of folks were really interested in hearing about the Madden Brothers and Madden Brothers songs, so I'm really happy that Alex was able to join me for this. It was really fun exploring that, because that's just, we just haven't touched any of that on the show yet. I wanted to share that I love having guests from all over the world and from all different backgrounds on Generation GC. The GC fam is totally worldwide, and it's cool for me to look at, you know, my stats and the listeners on Anchor and Spotify and see just how many people from different countries are tuning in all across the globe. So if you're listening to this and you're like, wow, nobody from my country has been on the show yet, hit me up, reach out. I would love to hear from you. If English isn't your first language, hey, that's totally okay. As long as you're just comfortable having a conversation in English, you're good to go. I just want to make sure that people are represented. I, I want Everyone, I would love for everyone to be able to listen to Generation GC and be like, hey, this person I connect with, I relate to, they they represent, you know, my background, they feel like me, they get my experience. So, yes, please reach out. I also wanted to remind everyone to visit blacklivesmatters.card.co and antisemitism.card.co to continue educating yourselves on Black Lives Matter and anti-Semitism, two things that are still prevalent, you know, whether or not there is constant news coverage, it's very important to continue informing ourselves and educating ourselves, no matter what is um, getting the most prevalent coverage in the news. Finally, Generation GC stickers are here and they look awesome. They're glittery. They're very cool. If you want stickers, there's a couple ways you can get them. Number one, support the show on Anchor, anchor.fm slash generation GC pod, P-O-D. And that helps me keep the show going. Everything that comes right in there goes right back into making the show the best it can be. It helps me get equipment that I need, and it also helps me print and ship the stickers. Number two, you can make a charitable donation. This week, I'm encouraging everyone to donate to No Kid Hungry or their local food bank, whether that's donating goods or donating money. Um, Because anything you can give makes a really big difference, and a lot of people really need that right now. A lot of people are still out of work. A lot of people are struggling to pay bills and rely on food banks. Also, make sure you are keeping up with Generation GC at Generation GC Pod, P-O-D, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, because I'll sometimes post different ways that y'all can get involved. One last reminder, Generation GC now has a Facebook group. Look up Generation GC Fam on Facebook, request to join, make sure you answer the questions, and I'll add you. It's fun, it's just a place for us to connect with each other, to hang out, have discussions, talk about Good Charlotte, talk about Generation GC, talk about other stuff. I don't know, look, we we clearly all have something in common, so I think we should all be friends. Thanks for tuning in, and now on to our episode. So, Empty Spirits is track 15, the final track on Greetings from California by the Madden Brothers, the musical duo that Benji and Joel Madden formed essentially in the hiatus years of Good Charlotte. This Mm -hmm. album came out September 12th, 2014. Let me, actually, let me check what day of the week, because albums by 2014, stuff was coming out on Fridays, right? I want to say it came out on a Tuesday. Oh, I, I know it's still fairly recent. That's right. Okay, so Amazon says September 16th. Huh. Do you think that maybe the September 12th date is like an Australian release? That could have been that, or that could have been like someone on Wikipedia or something somewhere like messed it up. But it appears that mm. it was... It was September 2014. <laughs> the month your work. Yeah, we can we can go with that. Um, this is also the final track on the record. 
and the record is split into two sides. So the first is this like very sunny 1960s pop rock produced by Eric Valentine, who everyone listening to this should know who Eric Valentine is because he yeah. produced The Young and the Hopeless and The Chronicles of Life and Death. And the mm-hmm. second side, including Empty Spirits, was produced by Joe Ciccarelli. Um, and it's yeah. like weird. It's, they, they say, they describe it as 70s era FM pop. Um, totally. Joe Ciccarelli, for those who are not familiar, is a Grammy winning producer who's also worked with the White Stripes, the Strokes, the Shins, Bland Bear. Um, I guess a lot of big, like, indie rock kind of names. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was looking over his name and I saw that he worked with, like, Morrissey and the, yeah. a couple other, like, people that we, people are our, our age might know or recognize. Yeah. That's a pretty good name, um, even though he had not worked with uh, the Maddens before. Yeah. I guess I want to pose this question to you, Alex. In terms of the halves of the record, do the two halves stick out to you as very distinct? I do think that you can tell that there are two different um, sides to the record, but the record definitely feels very cohesive. Yeah. And I know that most musicians, if not all, arrange their music or songs to flow into each other. Yes. Um, and I, the way that I see this album is like side A is like we mentioned the sunnier, uh, fun, poppy side of the uh, the record, and it reminds me of like the daytime, right? Mm-hmm. And the side B oh, this is, like, is definitely like a evening. nighttime song. Yeah, like it, it's like your day going into the evening. Um, and you Brother have, like, is those, on like, the second side, right? Songs. Yes, yes, because that's yes. definitely a nighttime song. Oh, for sure. That one, like, when the rain, while the rain is, like, Ugh, falling down yeah. and hitting on your car, <laughs> feeling all the emotion. I, I think if you didn't tell me there were, like, two different sides with two different producers, I don't know if I would have said, oh, there's, like, an obvious distinction, and they obviously worked with two different producers. And mm-hmm. especially knowing that some of the stuff they did with Eric Valentine was so angsty and moody. I almost mm-hmm. would have been like, oh, did Eric Valentine do, <laughs> like, this this the second, second half? half, you know? Um, yeah. At least reading it on paper, you know? Listening to it, listening to the second half, it doesn't really sound like Eric an Eric Valentine record. Um, mm-hmm. But I did want to read something that Benji said uh, about working with Joe Ciccarelli. He said, okay. we've never had a really organic and natural recording where it was just us kind of naked and not hiding behind walls of guitars and production. Joe can capture that unvarnished quality and make it sound great. He's one of the last great classic record makers. Yep. I do I do see this as more of like a natural, um, just like how he said, an, an organic yes. way of making a record versus maybe like purposefully going into the studio and having to like write out these songs Mm -hmm. Um, and not getting a natural flow to them. So I definitely can see that. Yeah. But they did have a pretty good team on the writing of this song. Um, Benji and Joel wrote this song alongside Ross Golan, who has written for Justin Bieber, Maroon 5, Demi Lovato, Five Seconds of Summer, One Direction, Linkin Park, Lau, personal favorite of mine, Selena Gomez, many more. Ross Golan is also the host of the podcast and the writer is. He also won BMI's Songwriter of the Year Award in 2016. And the song was also co-written by Wes Lang, who also did drawings from this album. And I guess this is the same Wes Lang that did art for Kanye West. Oh, which album was that? He did some merch for Kanye. Um, I guess he's done a bunch of collabs with so Westline has done a bunch of collabs with Kanye um going back years it seems oh interesting so but what's funny that I was doing as my searching it doesn't appear Westline has really done other songwriting like he's Mm -hmm. clearly a guy very inspired by music Mm -hmm. but doesn't appear he's done other songwriting because I'm like googling West Lang songwriter and it's just pulling up like West Lang Kanye West. Maybe he's done worked solely with Kanye. Yeah, I mean, it 
maybe it was like he was doing the artwork for this album and then he was like hanging out with the twins and was like oh let's write a song I don't, I don't know so I'd be curious how that came about it's I mean I know that they worked with Pharrell Williams yes. for one of the songs off the record I wonder if that kind of has like some sort of influence on it maybe um I think Pharrell I want to say that was California Rain that song I believe so yeah yeah this song was not a single, but since this is the first Greetings from California Madden Brothers album, I wanted to know mm-hmm. that the album did reach number one on the Australian album charts and number two on the New Zealand album charts. And uh, relevant to mention that this song has never been played live. Uh, there were a few Madden Brothers shows, mostly Australia and New Zealand, and it looks like, I guess, Jimmy Kimmel Live and maybe some other things like that in the U.S., yeah, their yeah. U.S. tour got canceled. Uh, so I'm gonna oh, read gosh. this. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna read this quote from Joel, and then we can kind of um, have some discourse. So Joel told okay. News.com.au, "We love America, but the tour postponement was out of our control. It was just six so- shows. We can do them in a few months, but I get the fans are passionate. Even though it feels to America we're in Australia a lot, we're in America more than we're in Australia." I'm an American who's in Australia a portion of the year for The Voice. We enjoy being here. So, like, did we ever find out why the tour was canceled? Because I'm Googling it, you know, as I'm getting my notes together for this, and there really was not much besides the Madden Brothers have postponed their tour. Um, I just remember, like, hearing about it and just, seeing the backlash online and people were really harsh harsh and mean um i mean i bought tickets to that uh u.s tour and i was super super excited to uh, see the madden brothers obviously um and i was bummed out for many reasons but i wouldn't go to the lengths that some of the people did on online you know i don't remember feeling we ever found out why no. I don't I don't know if I had bought a ticket. I was definitely planning to go, you know, to go see mm-hmm. them in, in New York, I guess, would have been the closest show for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think we ever really found out why. And so what, no. what that meant was that, like, a lot of these songs just never really got played live. And that a lot they of the never U.S. saw the light of day. Yeah, a lot of the U.S. just doesn't really know too much about this album, I think. No, I, I mean, I know they did, like, promo for it right before the album was mm-hmm. coming out. They did, you know, like you mentioned, Jimmy Kimmel and that Buzz um, yeah. VH1 show. They did Queen Latifah when she had her show. Oh, yeah. I um, and, yeah, and quite a few little things, but not as much promo as maybe we were used to with, like, previous Good Charlotte records. Right. And I kind of wonder if that's... So, this album came out on Capitol Records. Mm-hmm. And I also remember Cardiology, which also came out on Capitol Records, didn't have a lot of promo in the U.S. And maybe that was, like, the people at Capitol Records. Maybe that was the band members going, we feel like, you know, Australia is kind of liking what we're doing more, so let's focus energy there. I mean, it, it could have been a lot of things. But, I like, I get yeah. – I, I think I was old enough at the time that I knew that, like, Sometimes you make decisions that are maybe personal, maybe business, and they're but they're not necessarily like because they don't love the fans anymore. If I had been like fourteen when this happened, I would have been like, yes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but this album and and large part of why this you know kind of fell out of my personal rotation is that this album is not on Spotify. Nope. Cardiology is on Spotify, but I remember at one point going, I don't remember what episode this was, but I was doing a cardiology episode, and I was like, let Mm -hmm. me see if there's any good iTunes reviews, because those used to be real good. Cardiology Mm -hmm. is not on iTunes. Yeah, I noticed that was when I was looking up um, some information, I noticed that cardiology wasn't on iTunes either. But it was on Spotify, yeah. and I remember at one point the Madden Brothers it, they took off the record off Spotify. It was on yeah, there. Yeah, because it was on point. Spotify at one point. Yeah, yeah, and then it was on iTunes for a little bit of time. And I obviously I have the record, so I 
don't like necessarily listen to it on yeah. like, my phone or anything. <laughs> I still use an iPod. <laughs> um, and so I listen to it that way or I just like put it on my computer or something or on my vinyl record. Um, so for me, like I didn't know that it was still not on there, you know? Yeah, I I would be curious what happened because like I've heard of bands that are like, oh, we don't like our old material, so we're going to take it off. But mm-hmm. I don't think they they feel that way about the Madden Brothers record, do you? No, I don't think they do. And I, I generally don't think they are kind of like that at all about anything. But I mm-hmm. wonder if it's like more of like a legal thing. Like, not, I, I think so that, you know, like with the with the contract. Yeah, because both of those records were on Capital, mm-hmm. Capital Records, and everything else was on Epic, and then the last two releases were on MDDN. But it um, wasn't, but here's so. what I was also thinking about, was like, they had that Madden Brothers before Volume 1 mixtape, which I think they technically did mm-hmm. independent, and like, yeah. that's not on Spotify. Could be, could be just like, me. I don't, I don't know, I don't. I wouldn't know if it's like a personal decision, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean that also like the the before volume one was like I feel like that wasn't necessarily intended to be like a a release. Right. It was like, oh, here's like a fun thing we did. Um Yeah. I don't know. That'd be something uh, I'd be curious to find out like what what was the reason behind that because I have a California playlist and yeah. I would love to have this record uh, yes. this full record on my playlist because it's oh my so God. good. Um absolutely. Yeah. Well, if we if we find any answers in the interim in the next mm-hmm. few weeks before this album goes up, I will cut in in editing. Yeah, I mean, I've done qu- quite a few uh, a bit of research since we started talking about yeah. doing this song and a lot of the information, there's a lot of information, but at the same time, not so much. Right. Um, right. You know, you can't, you can kind of like go off just one page, two pages ma- max and kind of find everything that you need. So I feel like yeah. maybe it's just not out there. Maybe they don't want us to know. I wonder they did. I mean, they did a handful of interviews for this record not as many as they did, I would say, with, like, Youth Authority or Generation RX. Maybe that's yeah. just, you know, my my sleuthing and my finding skills. But, you know, it, it seems like there wasn't as much promotion, and part of that included press around this. But, yeah, yeah. I, I would be curious to hear, like, what's the whole story? Because, obviously, like, the Good Charlotte cardiology record is still on Spotify, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. and, and maybe it's not that at all, uh, at all, you know, because I don't, I, I don't know. Like, that's just my theory, is that it's something mm-hmm. to do with those being the Capitol Records releases and something about that, meaning they are not on certain sites. But who knows? Who knows? Yeah, maybe they just don't own the, the rights to it. or um, Yeah, maybe. Like you said, who, who knows? But one thing that I do have to say about um, the record, though, like, since where I lived, it, we lived in a very small community Mm -hmm. and the last time that I had heard like Good Charlotte on the radio was probably during um, the Young and the Hopeless record yeah Um, but I have this specific memory of when We Are Done came out and it played on on my local radio station and I remember just being like yeah I was like whoa what going on because like I said I haven't heard Good Charlotte on the radio in years Um, and I mean I've always followed them so of course you know, I wanted them on the radio and whatnot, but it caught me a little bit off off guard um, hearing it on my local radio station. But I think yeah. also because it was more of like a like a we like how we said sixties seventies kind of vibe that it just kind of gave um, maybe some people yeah. something new to try out. I don't know. Yeah i I don't think I ever heard Madam Brother stuff on the radio. Um, to be fair, also. The New York area, so I grew up in northern New Jersey, so I got the New York radio stations, did not have mm-hmm. an alternative rock station for, like, several years. That's so strange. I would yeah. assume that you guys would have something. But it was a big thing when we had, when 92.3 became the alt-rock station, like, I think I want to say just a few um, years ago. Um, so, I don't know, wow. maybe, you know, 
who knows? Who knows why? You know, it, mm-hmm. We Are Done definitely did get some radio play. Yeah. We have a lot to talk about with Empty Spirits, Alex, but I really want to help our guests get to know you. Mm-hmm. So first question I like to ask everyone is, when did you first hear Good Charlotte and what drew you to them? Like, what were your first thoughts on them? So as a little girl, I was very big on watching TRL and MTV. Um, And I have this memory of seeing them on TRL and MTV, but not really leaving a huge impression on me. Since (laughs) at that time, um, I I was more into like Backstreet Boys and Britney Spears, C2K. Um, Who were these guys dressed all in black? Yeah. yeah. Um, But I know that because I was a huge like MTV fan and they had their own uh, MTV show, All Things Rock, and they made appearances on TRL and other MTV shows, I know that I had to have seen them. Um, but it really wasn't until my, uh, till they premiered the Lifestyles video on TRL. And I just remember being so drawn to them and their style. Uh, their look was not something that I was used to. And it's probably more on Benji's part with the Liberty Spikes. <laughs> 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 something I had never seen anything like that in my life prior, prior to that um so it really like caught my attention and just made me like want to watch this video right yes. um and obviously I thought Joel was very cute um so that piqued my curiosity <laughs> as an 11 year old girl right, right um but at the time around that same time um Like I mentioned, I was into like Backstreet Boys and whatnot, more of the pop acts. But I did casually like songs from like Simple Plan, um, Avril Lavigne, Blink-182, Some 41. But I wouldn't say that rock was my favorite genre genre yet. Um, It really wasn't until that Lifestyles video came out that like it opened my eyes and solidified my love for this punk rock scene. Yeah. So you were like familiar with the genre and some kind of similar artists, but Mm -hmm. it took that video to like really make you go, oh, okay, like this is mine. Yeah. Yeah, because as soon as I watched that Lifestyles video, like I was all in, like I became obsessed. I wanted to like, you know, get every, like everything that I could get my hands on. I remember picking up the record and just like looking at all the bands that they talked about and just kind of diving into this world. And really for me, Good Charlotte is that band that, got me into everything that I listen to now. I love that. Amazing. And I Mm -hmm. also like to ask everyone, have you ever seen Good Charlotte live? I have. Coincidentally, um, my first time would have been seeing them on the Madden Brothers tour. Um, Uh, Like we know that (laughs) that tour got canceled. Um, But the first time that I did get to see them was at their comeback show at the Troubadour. And let me just say that was Probably the best <laughs> what? Like, first time that I could have ever seen Good Charlotte, you know? What was that like? Because I imagine during the hiatus, you were just like, oh, I'm just never going to get to see Good Charlotte. Yeah, that's definitely how I felt. I was like, okay, well, I've waited this long. I'll probably never get to uh, get a Ugh. chance to see them. And then when I had it, like, those tickets right in my hand for the Madden Brothers and it got canceled, I was like, okay, well, maybe it's not in my fate to see right. um, Joel Benji or Good Charlotte. Um and with the Troubadour, I had to buy my ticket off StubHub because the ticket sold out right away. And I paid quite a little bit of money to get a ticket in there. But I had to go see them at that show. And, I mean, it was amazing. Like, there was no barricade. You know, they were right so literally a small room. away from yeah. us. Super small. And, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better way to see them for the first time. That's incredible. And you grew up in California so where like whereabouts in California did you grow up? I grew up in the southern um, part of California and very close to the Mexican border. Okay. Um, I've lived a few hours from San Diego about two hours and then about four hours from LA so if I wanted if I went to a show or anything or we wanted to do something it was always like two to four hours away. Um, So the community that we lived in didn't really have that much to offer in regards to like a a music scene where where like huge artists came by you know yeah I was I was gonna ask that where if if, you know if you had any stuff locally because you had mentioned when we were just chatting before that you would go to LA for shows 
was there, I, I mean, in terms of like your peers in middle school, high school, like were people into music? Like did your peers listen to bands like Good Charlotte or were they, you know, just not tuned into what was going on with music? Well, when I, I would go to like local shows and like where I lived, we were a very, very small town and there mm-hmm. was, there's was different like communities. And so you would have kids from like another part of, uh, from a different town that's from 20 minutes away or from another one from 30, 40, um, like you would see them every weekend. And so I made friends with people who didn't necessarily go to school with me. Um, there were people that I would say that listened to alternative music, but nobody, at least from what I knew, like good Charlotte, they look kind of looked down down on me for liking them. I just saw them as like like this uh, poser type group, and yeah. that was a poser. And you know, I, I so I felt very alone in in that sense of with my love for Good Charlotte. Um, and it really wasn't until years later, around the Madden Brothers record, is where I started like meeting everybody. Um, I did back when I was a teenager on like. 15 or so I met my friend John um, and he lived in another town about 30 to 40 minutes away Um, and we didn't like we were friends we we became friends on MySpace and we would like chat every now and then and I knew he was a huge good Charlotte fan but you know we didn't get to hang out all the time and it really wasn't until about eight or so years ago where we just kind of like really connected and you know, he introduced me to Jasmine and Jasmine introduced me to everybody else. And so really like this Madden Brothers record was the the catalyst for me meeting everybody. So it really does have I a special that. place in my heart. Yeah. It's, you know, something I've thought about, because I feel like that is kind of common to some people I've talked to is like growing up, like when they were like middle school, because a, a lot of the people that are on the show that are fans are like around our age, you know, you and I are about the same age. And a lot Mm -hmm. of people are like, oh, yeah, middle school, high school, I would, like, be on message boards. And then it wasn't until, like, the Madden Brothers record or, like, when they came back from hiatus that I, like, really met a lot of other good Charlotte fans. And I always wonder, because I I relate to that, too. And I always wonder, like, if any of the people I talked to on, like, various message boards back in the day are people that I Right, that I've, like, met at shows later on or that I've had on this podcast. Yeah, yep. yep. I, see, like, I I was on the message boards and I would get online, but I, mm-hmm. I don't know, I, I feel like maybe not so much now, but at least back then, I felt like I had a hard time connecting with people mm. online because it's just kind of, like, awkward, I guess. Yeah. But I definitely was on there and I kind of kept more, like, to myself and, you know, I I had just myself to lean on with when it, and listening yeah. to Good Charlotte and just kind of, like, finding my own little place. But I'm really, really fortunate to have met so many friends through them now as an adult. And I always, like, think back, like, man, I like, I tell my friends, like, I wish we could have met a lot sooner because I think it would have made me feel less alone mm-hmm. in this little, this huge world that we live in. Yeah. Um, or just to kind of like be in those like same memories that they have, you know, like wishing that I could have seen them a lot sooner or just meeting, meeting them a lot sooner to kind of um, fan over them, you know? Yeah. I, I, I get that for sure. But it, it's like, oh, I'm I'm grateful that we're friends now, but like, oh God, I wish we had like all these other years together. But I don't know. It's like oh, Yeah, it's like so much time wasted, you know, yeah. like, wishing <laughs> that you could have been with them, you know. I was curious also, like growing up in California, did you feel a connection to greetings from California? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I know that I'm living in Arizona now, mm-hmm. but California is it's always going to be home for me and yeah. this record I kind of like think of it as this record that you want to just listen to with the windows down and just driving through the mountains or the desert and blasting it and singing yeah. along um it's it, like it just it's very true to what California is and it's also super special that you know Joel and Benji made this state or that state their home now sort of a love letter to yeah. California it's definitely and now that I'm here, um, yeah, for sure. And you know, now that I'm here in Arizona, like I, I've played this record a lot more, 
and just, you know, kind of like thinking back and reflecting on my time there and, you know, the future. Yeah. So what, if, if you're comfortable sharing, what brought you to Arizona and how are things going in Arizona so far? I've adjusted pretty well to Arizona so far. Um, I haven't really gotten to do much just obviously because of the pandemic. But Did you move during um, the pandemic? Yes. Oh, we moved rough. back in October. Yeah, it was it was really strange because you're going into houses and mm-hmm. all that stuff. So I mean, we, we've been pretty good at home and just staying at home and whatnot and kind of having to go out of the house to go do these things where it was a little bit nerve-wracking. But... Um, my mom and stepdad were looking at homes and, you know, they decided to move to Arizona because it was a little bit more affordable to live here. Um, and since they were making the move, I figured, you know, let me go ahead and give Arizona a try. Um, I felt like California didn't have anything to offer me anymore. I just kind of felt a little bit stuck and, you know, this move or this jump over here, just, I'm hoping that it you know lead me to bigger and better things so yeah um i'm hoping to move to phoenix within the next year or so but it also just depends on the pandemic and life yeah. in general you know definitely it, it's like when i was because i moved a little bit after you and i moved you know an hour and a half away from where i was living not even <laughs> um so it was really not a far distance yeah, and I'm actually not too far from where I grew up. I'm only yeah. about an hour or so oh, away. It's not too so bad. it's not Yeah, it's not too bad. So, Alex, we connected on Twitter. I mean, we connected a while ago, and we were kind of back and forth, and we had some different ideas, um, and you landed on Empty Spirits. Why did you want mm-hmm. to talk about this song in particular? Well, since the moment that I heard this song, I just knew it was going to be one of my absolute favorites off this record. Yeah. It really caught my attention just because it, I feel like it's very true to who Joel and Benji are as writers, um, musicians. And, you know, they they do what they do best, and that's great lyrics, all with a guitar, right? Yeah. Um, the song is sad, but beautiful. The emotions just kind of, like, hit me right in the gut. <laughs> it makes me think about, you know, past relationships, friendships. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whoever, right? And it's just a great song. Probably yeah. one of their best songs they've ever written, if I, if I dare to say. It's I, I I would not argue with that. It's I mean I I said as we were chatting that you know before we started rolling that like this is probably the only song on this record that I would like regularly go back to. Like I would spin the record every now and then, but. Mm-hmm. In terms of individual songs, this was, like, the one that really stuck out to me. I personally really love part B. Like, I love the whole record. Yeah. But part B just really, like, it just gets me. And that song in particular is just beautiful. Yeah. I like, I I, I think, as I was, because I listened to the record a bunch of times the past few days, and I think I like the side B a lot better. Um, But it's also the moodier side, and I tend to like kind of moody Music. Yeah, <laughs> same here. <laughs> it also reminds me of probably the most, like, closer to what they've written in the past. Yes, yes, definitely. So maybe that's why. Yeah, right. It it feels more like the stuff we know and love, even though it. I don't know. We'll we'll talk about this in a little bit, but like, even though I I don't yeah. know if it necessarily sounds like a good Charlotte. Mm-hmm. So I want to give our listeners some background on this record and on the Madden Brothers project. Okay. So in in talking about um, this is on their bio, which by the way, www at the is still active. Is it really? I haven't <laughs> I looked at that website in years. Yeah, I I assumed it wasn't. I assumed they like shut that down, but it's still active. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's been yeah. updated much in a while, but oh, Benji, <laughs> yeah, Benji says that Harvey Leeds, the guy who discovered us, used to say, you're like the Everly Brothers. Why would you be in a band? You should just be the brothers. So the idea was to not hide behind a band name or a genre, write some songs, and find someone to record them and help us deliver the truest picture of who we are musically. 
Yep, I agree with that. Yep. There's also, oh my God, this this next interview I'm going to read. <laughs> I'll save my my um, thoughts and response through it, but it brought back some feelings. <laughs> <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> so this is an interview that Jenny Valentish did, originally published in Times Out Melbourne. And they talked, and I, I know I'm not saying that how you're supposed to. Sorry. I don't I, I can't do the Aussie <laughs> accent. They talked about wanting to chase after opportunity and how their approach to that has changed. And I think this was Joel who said mm -hmm. We owe those good Charlotte fans records because the band is bigger than us. It doesn't even really belong to us. So we've had to say no to that, which has been difficult, but we're saying that maybe we can do something better than we've ever done. It's a testament to Australia for listening and giving it that chance. It almost kind of feels like he's talking, well, I guess he is talking directly to Australia in this art in this interview, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, he is because it was for an Australian um, publication. And he says... I always try and remind people that it's easy to sit back and criticize someone else for taking an opportunity, but that opportunity could mean the world to them. I respect it. Mm -hmm. Always. Nobody knew what could Charlotte were born out of and why we need to do it. I, I, slight, slight disagree with that because I feel like good Charlotte fans knew where they came from, but yeah. maybe a casual, casual listener wouldn't, you know, if you didn't like – spend the hours that I did that I'm sure you did growing up kind <laughs> yeah. of reading everything watching everything you might not Every know interview, yep. where they got from right they don't know that we were at one point homeless but we'll never forget it so when an opportunity comes you do it that was the hardest point about doing greetings from California we had to stop the good Charlotte train and make a record for the sake of making music yeah I mean I'm sure, like, at that time when, you know, cardiology was released and they, like, they were not necessarily as into Good Charlotte anymore. Um, yeah. But, I mean, obviously the hiatus hiatus happened, and, you know, because of that was the Madden Brothers brought out this amazing record and maybe more, um, like I said, more true to who they are, but also taking the opportunities to do something that you know most people might not agree with yeah like why is this so different and whatnot but you know i, I kind of agree with that they couldn't make a record like this as good charlotte oh no probably not i mean i, I mean, I mean like, maybe I they could who knows yeah because it, it's, it's hard to say because i feel like all the music that they've ever made i mean it's been pretty different yeah from each record they've they've you know evolved and you know like how, how do we know if it's not them or not you know you know what i think sticks out to me about this record that it doesn't have the angst that good charlotte tends to do and maybe angst isn't even the right word because i feel like angst sounds juvenile and like i don't think generation rx is angst and i mm -hmm. guess like there's this song and then brother and, yeah, there's a couple other songs, like, Dear Jane is, you know, about ending a relationship. But mm -hmm. it, there's a, like, introspective angst that is not present, I think, in a lot of this record. Yeah. That I feel like is more present in Good Charlotte. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that, I mean, like you mentioned, California Rain, Brother, Empty Spirit, mm -hmm. they have that, uh, that feeling but not necessarily like upset about yes. the past i know with um with brother i think if i'm remembering correctly they talked about how it was kind of like the conclusion of all the songs they've written in the past you know of um yeah it, of their, their dad so i didn't pull the i didn't get the exact quote but uh, one of the interviews I was watching, they said they said that like you know with brother we told the story of our father in a way that we don't have to tell it again. Mm -hmm. And if I'm remembering correctly too, I I honestly think they've kept up with that because I don't think you said I don't remember if you heard it. They mentioned him on Leech, yeah, father, but yeah, I I don't know. I I mean I don't know. I don't want to derail too much into like other songs on this record but like yeah obviously this is like the first 
episode I'm doing on a Madden Brothers song, so it had to come up. Um, yeah. And they they did work on this record for about three years, so I guess, you know, pretty much since Good Charlotte went on hiatus and they put out that yeah. Madden Brothers, the first before volume one mixtape, they started working on mm-hmm. this. Uh, I, I, I want to know, Alex, before we do our, like, super deep dive, what was your mm-hmm. thought when you first heard this album like what were your expectations did it live up to your expectations and how did you feel about like i guess this is a niche question but how did you feel about like what they were saying kind of in the press you know at the time i was honestly pretty pretty excited for this new venture um I know maybe yeah. some of the fans probably when they heard we are done, they were like, Oh, what, what's going on here? But I like any good Charlotte record, I always grab it. I gravitated to what they're writing about and especially that song. Um, so I was super stoked on the record coming out and it's easily one of my favorite Joel and Benji written records, you know? Yeah. I remember <laughs> I'm like laughing because I look back and I'm like, Dear God, like, I really felt like this, but I did. I I remember (laughs) feeling, like, happy that we were getting new music that Benji and Joel made and, like, enjoying the record. But I remember, you know, when I would read, like, all these interviews being, like, very nervous in a way that had never been about a good Charlotte record. And I remember kind of feeling sad because it felt like they were rejecting their past of good charlotte and i just remember being like i just want another good charlotte record guys come on (laughs) i i could definitely see that like and and probably a lot of fans felt the same way (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah meanwhile meanwhile are these the same fans that got all angry on the internet that the tour for this record was canceled (laughs) probably you know who knows knows? (laughs) maybe I, I can, like, see it from, like, a career perspective. I think I can see it with a little more maturity now, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, like, you had to make certain decisions and you had to make certain artistic decisions. Like, I get it a lot more now. Um, yeah. With this song in particular, Empty Spirits, what what do you think it's about? Like, what's your interpretation of the lyrics? For me, this song is, like, a reflection of a former love. Mm-hmm. Um, you you know, reminiscing on all the memories that you made together and the places that you that were once your places um, that you explored together. And you know, most of the time, if not all the time, people dedicate certain songs to each other, mm-hmm. and it kind of becomes a little bit like torture to hear those songs because of the memories that start to flood in when you hear that song. Um, and I mean, I for sure have <laughs> music yeah. songs that that make me feel that way. But I mean, my I might be different on this, but I kind of like to hear those <laughs> hear those songs, I like to torture myself <laughs> Ooh. and hear the, that music. You know, like I I don't mind listening to those songs that have a lot of memories to them. I I, I think you're you know I think we see the song pretty similarly. It's pretty clear what it's about. Like I think it's about you know. Mm-hmm you're trying to forget someone and like maybe you go out and meet someone new at the bar but then you hear like your song with this other person and you just think about that other person um yeah i am definitely like a i'll have like two sets of songs kind of like there's the songs that are like my song like the song that makes me think of the person in a good way and those yeah I just like I can't listen to again. I can't listen again. Oh no. But but the our songs, like the songs that make me like think of the negative parts, the songs that like kind of soothe the broken heart, those I will put on repeat. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I mean I, I can see how those are more of like a kind of like helping you through yeah. whatever heartache you're going through at the yeah. time, right? But yeah. Yeah, for me at least, like I you know, I can still listen to music, but I'm like, there's never not a time where I listen to those certain songs and I don't think about yeah. those people. Um, yep. But, you know, I, I, I like the, I like the songs. <laughs> I want to yeah. keep on listening to them. So if, if you're comfortable sharing and if you're not comfortable sharing, that's just fine. Um, 
if you're comfortable sharing, what are some uh, some of those songs for you that stick out? It's like, oh my god, this just brings me back to like a person. <laughs> I have, I mean, quite a few, uh, but yeah, like really some cool. of the ones that like that I probably hear the most often and. You know, like one of them is hey, hey There, Delilah by Clean White Deeds. Okay. Especially because that one still gets played in the stores all the time. now. And so yep. <laughs> all the time. And every time I hear it, I just, I think of like my first boyfriend. Um, just like cute memories for that one. But um, from first to last, Emily, note to self. <laughs> um, maybe Emo. not your average, <laughs> not your average like roman romantic songs. Um Otis Redding, uh, what's the name of that song? I can't remember. I just blanked out. Um, These Arms of Mine, that one's a sweet song. Yeah, and there, there's quite a lot, actually. Oh, yeah. I I think my there's three artists for me that come to mind of, like, ones I can't listen to anymore. Ooh, I'm curious to hear yeah. what those are. Yeah, so they are, and they're all because I associate them with, you know, different people. One of them is mm -hmm. Need to Breathe. Can't. I can't. I can't. One of them oh. is Marshmallow. And, like, I can listen to some of the newer Marshmallow stuff, like the collabs he's done, but, like, the first Marshmallow record, nope. I I can't. I can <laughs> listen to it, but there was a long time where I just, like, I couldn't. Um, the other one is Dermot Kennedy, uh, who I just, like, yeah. I don't know. I just got a hard time with it. <laughs> For a bit, I could not listen to Anthony Green, but I have no oh. problems listening to Anthony Green anymore. Anthony Green I can listen to, and Anthony Green I love. So, uh, oh. something we were talking about, Alex, as we were getting ready for this, we were chatting over Twitter, was the use of the phrase, empty spirits. Like, yes. is that empty souls? Like, sad people that he sees sitting at the bar? Or is it mm -hmm. empty liquor bottles? Well, see, literally, like, for however long this record has been out, what, six, seven-ish years, I always looked at empty spirits as, like, your empty, like, your soul, your sad people. Yep. But literally, as soon as we were talking about this, I'm like, empty spirits, like, like spirits. Sad at people, the bar, yeah. Li liquor bottles, yeah, like, maybe it's also, it could be, like, a double entendre where, yeah. you know, it does mean both, like, you're kind of like sulking at the bar and drinking your emotions away and it's literally empty spirits yeah i think i think it's i definitely think it's a double entendre like both mm -hmm. sad lonely people sitting at the bar and also the empty liquor bottles that these sad lonely people are maybe staring at you know yeah <laughs> like, for uh, sure i just find it so funny how it it, it, it took me so long like it didn't I never even thought about that until literally we started talking about that's this so song. funny just like because i think how, that's like, how did that happen <laughs> well you know what's funny is like what drew me to this song was like oh that double entendre like that's so great the twins did do a track by track i think they did pretty much the whole record track by track on youtube yeah joel mm -hmm. said that they wanted it to be the last song on the record and how it was, you know, it was about a relationship that ended and that, you know, those sad songs that you once loved are now kind of torturing you. And Benji said, and this one, like, ouch. He said, we wrote it specifically to be the last song on the record. Maybe it's the song of ours that someone will put on a playlist for someone. But, like, can you imagine, yeah. <laughs> can you imagine putting this on a playlist for someone and making this your song with them? And then... I mean... I and don't then, know if I would make it the song. <laughs> right? Maybe after if we broke up or stopped talking, then yeah, like this is right? the song that I would listen to, but not like yeah. not as the song. Like this is our song, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> they also confirm in that video that it's Jeff Buckley's cover of Lilac Wine that is mm -hmm. referenced in the song. Um, were you like familiar with this cover? Because like. I knew it was Jeff Buckley's cover of Lilac Wine. I don't think I ever checked out the cover until, like, the other day working on my notes. Oh, no. When this record came out, and at first I thought he they were singing, like, I like wine or something like that, and then I quickly realized. 
<laughs> quickly re- realized that, which actually would make sense since, you know, empty spirits. Um, right. But I quickly realized that he's actually talking about a song that he can't listen to anymore. And so I looked it up and that's how I came across that Jeff Buckley mm-hmm. um song and that song is beautiful like yes. it, you can feel it deep in your soul I put like I put it on the other day and I'm just like whoa like I feel <laughs> I feel emo right now <laughs> yes it's definitely like you know I don't have the connection to lilac wine per se but mm-hmm. I could definitely see this being the type of song that like if you put this on a playlist for someone or they put it on a playlist for you and then like you broke up or you fell out you might have some trouble listening to it again. Yeah, probably. It's a very I, I mean, emotional with my, song. With my track record, who knows? I probably yeah. still need yeah. to be listening to it to torture myself. But I think I think I would listen to the song. It's good to, like, be able to create new memories surrounding those songs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I do agree with, um, with Benji saying that this song was obviously meant to be as a last track because it does have like that last track feeling to it like it's just like a nice conclusion or a nice way to end this record on on that note you know Mm -hmm. something i just wanted to point out that i had come to really appreciate about this song and my listens over the past few days is Mm -hmm. the i guess this will be the mixing like how you will hear certain different subtle parts kind of coming in on the left speaker versus the right uh, so I'm mm-hmm. glad I was listening to this, like, on, you know, noise-canceling headphones and not just off my laptop because I could I could hear that. I could notice that a little more. Yeah. The the, the strings in the on that song are just really, really, really beautiful. Yeah. If they played this live, I think it would have been just the twins and an acoustic guitar. Oh, it would have been so good. It would have been great. It would have been great. <laughs> You know, I don't think we're ever going to hear that. No, I I, I mean, I doubt it, but I always have a little bit of hope that, you know, they'll surprise us one day and, you know, maybe play this whole record or do something fun um, with this, with these songs. But, I mean, hey, they played a bunch of songs on that live stream that we never thought we were going to hear. So I wouldn't put it past them to surprise us somehow. I mean, who knows? Who knows? I mean, you know, we did get a new song a little, little less than mm-hmm. a month ago. We got last December. Who knows if there's more new music on the way, if there's performances? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, they could, they're good at surprising us and yeah. catching us off guard, so <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. So here's my question for you. Could this have worked on a Good Charlotte record? And which good Charlotte record would you place it on? Oh, so I was thinking about this question. Mm-hmm. And based off the moodiness of the, the song, I would maybe place it on Chronicles. Mm. But also it being so close to um, the release of Cardiology that I also think it would fit very well in that record. Yeah. Um, but I think either of those two records would work. Chronicles is very moody, which this song also is. But this definitely isn't as, like, I mean, I feel like Chronicles Mature. is about death. Like, yeah, there's a lot on Chronicles. The Chronicles of Life and Death. We always, you know, we'll always say Chronicles. <laughs> and, like, yeah, like, they talk about, like, yeah. death and dying a lot on that album. Uh, <laughs> I can see Chronicles. I, I feel a lot of cardiology but also some Good Morning Revival because there's some moodiness there. Although, of Mm -hmm. course, like Good Morning Revival, the production is entirely different. But there's a lot of songs on that record that are like kind of about relationships and broken hearts and you're a little moody. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to think about like other Good Charlotte songs a track kind of relates to. I mean... Mm hmm there weren't any that felt like super direct like super similar yeah. obviously there's lots of songs about like relationships and relationships ending um you know sex on the radio and let the music play are both about about music sex on the radio mm-hmm. is about like 
relationships and music. Um, yeah. But, you know, very different, very different songs, I think. Yeah, I was, like, looking at their track list and kind of, like, trying to see what I could yeah. um, compare them to. I did come up, up with three songs. Okay. Like you said, not, there's nothing really that they put out that sounds exactly like this, but these were the three that I could kind of see, um, you know, being in the same boat. And like, the first one would be Change. Oh, okay. Um, okay, yeah. Because, you know, in the line, he says, because the first time I saw you, I only thought about you. And, mm. you know, with with the way that this Empty Spirits is written, like, you can't stop thinking. Like, you hear yeah. the song and you just Ooh, automatically that's a good think point. of that person. Yeah, so that's like, you know, you're sitting in that bar all alone and you hear that song and you just, you think about that first time that you met them and how, how they left an impression in you, you know? Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, not, not like I said, it, it's two completely different songs, but yes. I, I I can kind of make the comparisons with that. I mean, they're, they're two songs that are about like being sad about, you know, either a relationship that ended or a rejection, you know, however you want to take change. Um, yeah. 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 That's a good yeah. comparison. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I was going to also say that even maybe like say anything or ghost mm. of you. Mm, okay. Okay. Could, yeah. Could ghost of you actually, that's a really good comparison. Yeah. You know, the ghost of that person that haunts you. Yeah. They haunt you the in the songs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. That's really, I like that a lot. I like ghost of you a lot. Yeah. And we'll say anything because of the, um, you know, best friends can become strangers and in a relationship when, when the relationship is at, you know, the point of, you know, they feel like a stranger, up and whatever, yeah. like you feel like a stranger to mm-hmm. them. So that's yeah. a little line. Oh yeah. Uh, so I want to go over some of the critical response to the record. Mm-hmm. So there were a handful of reviews of this record. Not many that talked about this song by name, which mm-hmm. I was kind of surprised because like, I don't know, like, yeah, it's not a single or anything, but like, it stands out, I think, from the other songs. Sure. Just like like the arrangement of the song, you know? The arrangement of the yeah. song, I think, stands out so much. And like, usually you'd pointed that out. But we did get a couple reviews, so we're going to read those. Okay. Renowned for Sound said, The album concludes with the downbeat Empty Spirits showing us some more emotive delivery in the vocal. Sputnik Music gave the album a four out of five. And that was shocking to me because we read a few of their reviews of Good Charlotte records and they are nasty. Like they've been brutal. Yeah, they've been so brutal (laughs) and nasty. And I'm just like, what? And I think they're like a user site. I I don't know. And like, I think it's different people that have written, you know, this review versus the Good Charlotte record reviews. Um, Mm -hmm. But they like this. Maybe. Maybe they didn't know. I mean, I guess it'd be kind of hard to not know that it's Joel and Benji, but maybe they just yeah. didn't know it, it was them and they gave them a good rating. That, and I think it might just be a different person wrote this than wrote some of the other Good Charlotte stuff on the website. Yeah. That's that's honestly, like, my, my biggest guess. Uh, so I'll read what they said about Empty Spirits. Uh, Empty Spirits contains a nice violin solo Empty Spirits is about sitting in a bar and mournfully contemplating your frustrations when something is bringing you down. (laughs) I'm (laughs) laughing a lot on this episode. Some people might not mind any of the lyrics, but it seems to me like at times the lyrics are a little weak. Most of the lyrics are pretty solid, though, and I'd say that some of the stronger songs lyrically would include Brother, Out of My Mind, Dear Jane, and Empty Spirits. Yep. I, I could I could kind of agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's read this Amazon review, and then I'll read some YouTube comments. So Amazon okay. user Matt182 says, uh, Empty Spirits still sounds like folk with a completely acoustic guitar sound and a slow rhythm. Uh, it's not one of my favorites, and it ends the album on a somber mood. It's very hard to describe the type of music this is. There's a number of different sounds, and it's inspired by different styles from pop, rock, indie, and more. It's 
mostly quite a shift from anything GC have done. Um, if you like GC, there's no guarantee you'll like this album. But if you appreciate the Madam Boy's talent, then you should like it. I mean, he's not wrong, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, I I think it's, so, so, sometimes it's so hard to like know if the people who are leaving reviews are if they're being like genuinely like if they're actually being nice or right. if I'm just like reading it wrong, you know, it's, it's hard to to say. Yeah. It's hard to kind of say like where people are coming from, like with like an Amazon review, like are they trying to share like their unbiased opinion or are they just like trying to be like, I like this. I don't like this. Like, cause I see like an Amazon review as like, you should buy this. You should not buy this. Yeah. And this, like, I've this, definitely seen like people say that they're like, "Hey, buy this record," or "Don't right. buy this record." Like, don't right. waste your money on that. Definitely, there was a point on Circles and Sound Waves where, like, I would try to include a, a verdict on my reviews, and I usually would mm-hmm. give a score, but like the score itself, it's kind of like, uh, okay, like, what does that mean? But I would try to also put a verdict, like, buy it, download it, buy it buy five copies, listen to it, you know, play it for everyone you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but also, music is so subjective, it's hard yeah. to say, like, if I love it, you'll love it too, or you won't mm-hmm. love it. Like. Well, I think this person was honest. I think this person was honest that, like, yeah, you, if you're a good Charlotte fan, I'm not gonna promise you'll love this. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I would say that most GC fans ended up loving this yeah. record, but I could be wrong. <laughs> but definitely, like, there wasn't the promotion and excitement around it. Like, there wasn't a tour, you know? Yeah. So there wasn't that connection, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, let's read. So I have two YouTube comments on, like, a fan upload of the song. Um, Valerie to Torossian said, thank you for posting this. My fiance sounds like this when he sings and my CD is in my car with him and my dog was going nuts until I played this and it calmed her little butt down. <laughs> very sweet. <Thank> you. <laughs> um, yeah, very sweet. Glad this person's dog loves good, you know, loves Benji and Joel's voices. Adorable. Love it. <laughs> it's a great song to go to sleep to, right? Yeah. <laughs> And I had to save this one for last. Jacob Pando says, when I first heard this, I loved it. I was talking with someone. I was so close. Now I don't. And now I truly feel this song. (laughs) Ouch. I'm so sorry. Sorry, Um, Jacob. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You you made, you know, Benji's little prophecy come come through, you know, of of this. You listen to this with a person and uh, now you really feel the song. No, you hate it. Sorry, dude. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> As we wrap up, Alex, how has Empty Spirits held up for you over time? Um, it honestly just gets better every time I hear it. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel like the song was written seven plus years ago. It, it, it still feels very fresh and relevant. Yeah. It is such a... I feel like this song, like, the details of, you know, specifically saying lilac wine, like, saying the song that is for them makes it feel Mm -hmm. so specific, but the emotion is so universal Mm -hmm. that I think has helped it hold up very, very well. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What has Good Charlotte meant to you over the years, and how has that changed? Oh, man. Um... Good Charlotte, it definitely, my love for them has definitely changed mm-hmm. in the sense that it's only gotten stronger. Yeah. Um, GC has always been a huge part of my life. And, you know, it was the first time I ever really connected with music because they talked about things that were really taboo at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, before them, I never really heard songs about difficult relationships with a parent or talking yeah. about holding on when you feel like the world is against you mm-hmm. um they've always been super vulnerable and relatable and over the last like what five ish years that i've been seeing them live and you know i've gotten to meet them a few times it only has like solidified um that love for them and 
everything that I envisioned them as a child, like it's true. They yeah. are great, genuine people. And you it's can really validating tell, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can really tell how much their fans mean to them. And, <clears throat> you know, as a young, a young teenager, like, I always envision like, oh, what, what it would be like to meet them and, mm-hmm. you know, every, everything that I saw about them, they've met that expectation and they're gen- genuinely super sweet guys. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a special thing. It's definitely not something that I think everyone can say about their favorite artists that like yeah. oh yeah my favorite band when i was 11 years old like their music still holds up and also they're like cool people yeah i mean for me like they're they're like that comfort band, yeah you know i can for any emotion that i'm feeling whether it's happy sad um you know anxious like i can put on a song and i know that i'm gonna feel better and you know that like i know most people grow out of their love for certain musicians or whatnot but they've been with me for the last what 17 or however long it's been yeah <laughs> um years so and i'm never like i don't see myself just stopping that you know i kind of feel like because i thought about this too i'm like how many of my friends who like found a favorite band when they were 11 or 12 or even 13, how many of them, it's still their same favorite band at like 28, 29, 30. Um, Yeah. But I kind of feel like to me, and I'm wondering if you relate to this too, like, I don't know, I reached a certain point, like probably a couple years ago where I was like, yeah, definitely no one's going to eclipse good Charlotte at this point (laughs) because it's like, they've been number one for so long. So yeah. So they would have to be pretty great to like surpass them in my personal like rankings. Like I, I, I listen to a bunch of music and I listen to newer bands or newer newer musicians. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I just don't see anybody like taking like my favorite bands, even like the newer ones. You know, even if they those are like top favorites too, but you just can't beat the nostalgia and the memories that you've had with somebody or not somebody, but with a band over the last 15, 16 years, you know? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Well, Alex, do you have any last words about empty spirits about the Madden brothers or about good Charlotte or about yourself? Um, I will say that the Madden Brothers were really underrated and they didn't get as much love as they probably should should have. And I would absolutely love to see these songs live one day. Mm-hmm. And I hope maybe also I don't think that a lot of people bring up the Madden Brothers yeah. album to them. So maybe it's kind of just like on the back burner. But I feel like if if a lot of fans just kind of like <laughs> maybe brought it up to their attention. Maybe they would do something special um, with these songs one day, but yeah, I mean, I'll always love good Charlotte. Yeah. Amazing. I love that. Now, before we head out, uh, unfortunately I can't put this song on (laughs) the Spotify playlist. I wonder if the lilac wine cover is on Spotify. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll put there. I'll put Jeff Buckley's Lilac Wine cover on on the playlist in place of Empty Spirits. Um, but Alex, mm-hmm. I would love to get a recommendation from you for the Generation GC and Friends Spotify playlist. Oh, so I was kind of going around listening to a couple songs that I've heavily been listening to, but mm-hmm. the one that kind of stuck out to me was probably more of like a, a newer band to some people. Um, at Seaway, if you let me, um, they just put out a record last October. I want to. Oh yeah, say, what's the record called? Because I heard some of the big sing- vibe. Okay, yeah, I heard some of the yeah. singles, but I don't think I listened to the full record yet. Love Seaway, yeah, and I think if you love Good Charlotte, I think you would definitely enjoy Seaway. Yes, love Seaway. Um, have not, you know, I, I haven't like kept in touch with any of them or anything, but very, very sweet guys you know and a very very fun band live yeah oh for sure yeah. very fun um now did you want to leave anyone as we head out did you want to leave anyone with you know socials or where they could get in touch with you um you can find me on twitter 
Uh, my username is Lex underscore silver with three R's. Perfect. Alex, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much. This was my first recording in like a month and it felt very nice. <laughs> this was such oh, a great- Oh, I'm glad to have been. Yes, and, and a great first Man and Brothers episode. And I know I was wanting to have you on the show for a while. So I'm, I'm so glad we could do this. Yes. I'd be more than happy to come back. <laughs> I would love that. Listeners, thank you for tuning in to this bonus episode. A few days ago, on our last regular episode, we talked about Alive from Cardiology. In a few days, next Wednesday, we'll be back with our next regular episode on a song from Youth Authority. My name is Molly Harrelson. I've been your host, and please follow Generation GC at Generation GC Pod POD on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can also follow me at M Huddleson, M H U D E L S O N on Twitter and Instagram. Please make sure to follow the show wherever you listen, subscribe on iTunes, rate, review, and tell your friends. We want to spread this to all anyone that likes Good Charlotte. Tell them about this podcast. Even if they don't like Good Charlotte, tell your friends about this podcast and be like, you just, just listen to like one Good Charlotte song with each podcast and, and then you'll become a fan. I don't know. Thank you all for listening to this episode.